a couple other things transpired over the weekend, JLs. I, I got some intel. I did receive some okay. intel. And, and when the birdies are chirping, I like to bring it back to the group so that we can discuss. Um, one of the things I heard was in reference to the Knicks draft. And, you know, we have the number eight pick, yes. But we also have 27 and right. uh, 38. The two names that I'm hearing that the Knicks love right now at those positions. There's one Cassius Stanley out of Duke. And right. Robert Woodard, the second out of Mississippi State. And so we're going to bring in my guy, Ethan Piotta from the Prospect Podcast. He does a, a lot of great work with mock drafts and prospect analysis as well. Cassius Stanley at the end of the first round. Uh, you're talking about a guy I've watched him in high school, played against him in high school a few times. Extreme athletic upside. Uh, had a really nice year at Duke this year. Actually, a funny stat that I read on him or when I was actually watching film and I noticed every single three-pointer that he shot, every single three-pointer that he made was off an assist this entire year uh, at Duke, which kind of tells you a little bit about his offensive equity or lack thereof. Doesn't have a lot of creation value right now offensively, uh, but he's someone that can definitely grow into that three and D mold. Um, and to be honest with you, he's not quite there fully on, on either aspect yet. I definitely buy his shooting a little bit more than his defense. Uh, what's intriguing about Stanley is just that overall athletic upside that I kind of talked about. If he can kind of put those tools together defensively to become more efficient, more and uh, more intelligent off the ball, he's going to be a defensive nightmare on that side. Uh, this is a guy that if, you, if you've seen his, some of his training videos, I mean, he's doing ridiculous dunks in the gym. He's been like that for a while. Uh, and what I think is really interesting with Stanley is you're going to get a guy who's got a really good base to build upon with just his athleticism alone his potential three-point shooting in the future and his defense, but also going back to his high school days at Sierra Canyon, at Harvard Westlake, before that in California, uh, he was the guy. He was the guy that had the ball in his hands. He was creating for others. He was creating for himself. Uh, we saw none of that this year at Duke. Uh, and I think if he's able to unlock just a little bit of that, uh, it's going to up his ceiling a lot because right now he's someone who has, I would say, considerably high floor with his shooting and with his athletic package. Uh, I, I think he has a lot of untapped potential as well. Uh, I don't know how much translates to the NBA level if he didn't do much at college, but watching him, you know, a good amount in high school, going back through his high school tape as well, he was a guy that had the ball in his hands a lot more uh, offensively than he did at Duke. I like buying that as part of his, you know, potential upside package. When you say, you know, the limitations from a shot creation standpoint, is that based on how he was used at Duke? Or, or do you think, you know, that just might be the type of guy that he is, just, just more of a finisher uh, and a potential 3 and D uh, type of ceiling? Right. I think it's a little bit of both. I, I think how he was used at Duke uh, alongside guys like Trey Jones and, and obviously Vernon Carey had the ball a lot in the post. Uh, they didn't have as much of a need for him to, to create. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I thought that was something going into this year that was going to be a lot of a, of a bigger part of his game was just his creation because that's what we saw so much in high school, especially on those great Sierra Canyon teams uh, that he played with his last few years. Um, but I mean, it, it all comes down to are, are you, you know, are, are there people obviously within front offices willing to go back and, and buy that potential upside that we saw in high school? Because this is there. He was, he was someone that had the ball a lot in high school. He was creating his own shot. Uh, and like I said, uh, it, it kind of just tells the story with his with his limitations this year at Duke is that he really just didn't get that opportunity. Uh, I, I think it's a it's a good blend of both. And again, it, it's hard to project, you know, if this prospect Cassius Stanley didn't, you know, have this much offensive creation equity in college, and he's he's basically taking a year off from it. How much is going to really translate to the NBA? And it's it's that's I mean. If you're buying that part of his game, which is obviously it's a little bit far fetched, but I definitely would put, you know, put some stock into it. That definitely ups his uh, his his value and his ceiling a lot more. Uh, how about Robert Woodard out of Mississippi State? Really interesting prospect here. Someone I, I've, I've risen on a lot. Uh, and to be quite honest with you, is just during the season, did not watch many Mississippi State games. Uh, but Robert Woodard, really interesting skill set. This is a guy who's Six seven with a seven one wingspan, uh, and he shoots forty three percent from three. So wow. you know, just those three numbers alone are going to uh, draw the attention of a lot of scouts of a lot of teams. Uh, the biggest thing with Woodard is 
you know, watching his progression from his freshman to sophomore year, he, he rose his three-point percentage up about 15 points this year to 43%. Uh, the biggest thing is it's still only on about two point, I think, three attempts per game. Uh, so you'd like to see that number increase a little bit in volume just to, you know, uh, get a better sense of what he could provide. Uh, I think offensively, he's pretty limited in terms of where he could go. Uh, this is a guy, again, kind of like Stanley, but I would say even a higher floor than Stanley in terms of just what he can bring because he's such a freak athlete. Again, at 6'7", and you're talking about a guy, again, 7'1 wingspan. I've heard some people bounce the idea of him playing like a small ball five around at the next level, uh, which is kind of crazy to me. But again, combo forward, so he's going to be able to play both the power and the small forward positions. Uh, I think defensively is going to be where he makes his name in the NBA, uh, because although he did shoot 43%, you want those attempts to go up. Uh, that number is probably going to dip down into the low 30s next year. He wasn't a great uh, free throw shooter. There isn't a lot of positive indicators to just full on buy his shot to be, you know, absolutely elite at the next level. Uh, so defensively, him guarding, you know, one through four with his athleticism, if you can, you know, play around with him in, in those in those five and four spots, just using his athleticism, his, his vertical uh, in different situations. Defensively, he could be an absolute monster and could also, you know, not be off unplayable offensively by being able to just knock down the three pointer. But, you know, other than that, offensively, he's got really limited playmaking. Uh, his assisted turnover ratio is, is super far down. He's not someone that's going to be creating his own shot, mm -hmm. I, I think, at any point in his career. Uh, I, I'd like to see him, you know, with his tools, with his athleticism and his size and his wingspan, I'd like to see him become a lot better around the rim. Uh, I, you know, most of his, his finishes this year were just kind of bunnies and, and wide open shots. And I, I'd like to see him expand on that because, you know, with those tools, uh, I think that definitely could rise his upside a lot. Uh, if you're drafting Woodard at 27, which I, I don't think is a, or is it 27 or 25? I don't think it's a, it's a bad pick at all. Um, but again, he's someone that's going to be that defensive monster at some point in his career, most likely. Uh, but, you know, past that, there's not a lot to, to build around with him. I think he's got a pretty high floor and a low ceiling, uh, even with his, his athletic tools, his wingspan and all those other factors. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, when you consider 27 and 38, you, you're probably looking for guys that can, yes, contribute, but can that can fill a role, right? And and then if you continue to develop them, you, you see what you can get out of them. I, I think Woodard, he, he appears to be a guy, like you said, you know, with six seven seven one wingspan, you know, the wing defense on the wings is a, is a premium. You know, when you look at what these guys Absolutely. are doing in the bubble, you look at what Jimmy Butler is doing right now. You look at the freak, Siakam, uh, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron, you go on and on. Having a guy that could potentially guard four positions, maybe a little small ball five in a pinch, you know, may not be such a, such a terrible idea. They're good pieces to have because they're going to come not at a, at a complete premium. They're probably both going to be there at 38 even maybe. Uh, and, and you can build with them. They're, you know, they're, they're guys you can throw on the floor. They can do a few different things. They can have a really high impact in low usage roles. I love those kind of players. Those are definitely my favorite kind of players in the NBA because uh, they come at such a premium. Like you said, you can never have enough of those guys. And I think that's really where Cassius Stanley and, and Robert Woodard can both make impacts in the NBA is in those low usage, high impact roles. And hey, listen, they, these are, uh, you know, later round picks. Obviously, we're, we're not talking star power here, but you never know. And and you, you're looking for guys that you can continue to develop, get them right. in here. Are, are these Thibodeau type of guys? These are defense first type of guys. Uh, you know, in, in Stanley, you're looking at a slasher type, you know, get to the rim, could, could occasionally knock down that three, but give you some solid defense. And Woodard, like I said, you, you get that Swiss Army knife that you can put out there, you know, twos, threes, fours, maybe small ball fives, the way he gets after it. Again, not not a bad position to fill a role on this team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I heard Cassius Stanley is is iffy on defense, but I do like the the fact that he does hit the corner three at a high clip. Something that Tom Thibodeau likes to stress hitting those corner threes. But um, yeah, some solid picks at, at that uh position for the Knicks and Robert Ward. Uh, he actually uh he, he's intriguing as well, man. You can't you can't hate a seven foot wingspan, man, and, and a guy you can switch from one to four or even five. So. 
Um, I feel like these guys will most likely be in the G League if we do draft them. If we don't, you know, choose to package them for something else. But uh, yeah, intriguing, some intriguing draft prospects for the Knicks for sure. 